Wait, wait until it's done. Just cuz you clicked it twice. No, it's gonna be Matt and Spud next. Oh. Oh my goodness, Sorry. From high atop 1926 Hollywood Boulevard, you're listening to SoFlowRadio.com. Welcome to Rick's show on the radio. Let's listen to a little bit of Elston Torres. Alrighty, alrighty. Guys, Welcome. Please. Guys, please. Silence, don't talk. Don't talk because we're going to get it. Welcome to Rick's show on the radio. August. What is this? August 28th, Thursday. Yes. We have in the studio Elston Torres. Welcome, Elston. Thank you, Rick. Great right. to be here, man. Yeah, man. Uh, also, uh, my name is Rick Santis. And also in the studio are my good friends and uh, my producer, David Goldenholtz. Say hi to everybody. The The webcam's on. George Rodriguez, the master here, and he is our Yoda, by the way. Learn much from him, we do. That's uh, Yoda and Grover have the same voice. So. Right. 
I don't know how to do the difference. <laughs> Gro- Groda. We Gro- can call him Groda. Groda. I like that. Groda. Yeah. Groda. Anyway, <laughs> welcome, Elston, man. It was uh, thank you, Rick. It's really, thanks, man. It's nice to meet you. Um, we met at your uh, songwriters in the round, mm-hmm. which was held uh, what last Friday? Last Friday, uh, August something. I don't remember right now. Right, and uh, you were there at Luna Star Cafe. Yeah, with, with, uh, with uh, Jim Camacho and uh, Brian uh, Hanlon from uh, Ireland. He's a sweet guy, man. I listened to his music. He's He's a very genuine guy. He's a genuine guy, very talented, uh, you know, all around just a good musician, good guy, you know? Yeah, and I looked like you were having fun up there. I, mean, I was blessed. Every song was, like, better than the next. Yeah, we had a, we had a great time. I had, I had never uh, really shared a stage with Jim uh, before, and we know each other for maybe 20 years now. Uh, Jim, like I said on stage that night, Jim's band, The Goods, mm-hmm. was one of the first bands I saw when I moved down to South Florida from New York City. I grew up in New York City. Oh yeah, and um, and I was really impressed by the goods. They had great songs, great li- live band, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've been down here for twenty years. This is my twentieth anniversary. Can't believe I've been here that long. Yeah, well, we're going to get to the people that you know and who you've played with because I mean, you've been down here for twenty years and you've been involved in the scene in Miami, right? The mm-hmm. Miami Sound Machine. The Miami, uh, yeah, the Miami music scene, definitely. You know, uh, it's uh, back. 20 years ago when I got here, it, it was uh, it was the, the beginning of the golden age of Miami music scene. You know, we from here to the rest of the world, I mean, we, you yeah. know, we affected the whole world. You know? A lot of good stuff coming out. Yeah, really. I mean, the Miami sound definitely had its own uh, momentum going yeah. back then with uh, Emilio and Gloria and Estefan. Gloria and John and, uh, Cicada. And John Cicada. And all those, uh, even Shakira, the year, a couple years after that, she came into town also. And uh, yeah, we uh, we created a scene here that uh, that affected the, the music scene all over the world, you know. So sure, we're yeah. we're proud of that, you know. It's it was a mixture of of our roots, of our Miami roots, you know, the the Cuban Latin mix and with yeah. pop and rock and you know. Yeah, you should be proud of that. And you got to play with some really good people along the way as well, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've I've been very fortunate in this uh, industry. I've I've worked with many people, uh, very talented people, very sweet people. Mm. Which to me is even more important, you know, because mm-hmm. you could be talented and be a, a slob Derp. and yeah. somebody you don't want to work with, and it just takes away the talent. Yeah. Well, I know some of the people that you've worked with in the past, uh, so good people as well. My friend Tommy McWilliams, uh, you know yeah. him. Uh, yeah. I just had a beer with him. Like, right. like literally, like just had a beer with him. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. Tommy's he's great, super talented man, and uh, I've known him for many years. Yeah. And I've co-written a couple of great songs with him, you know? Yeah, he's a good producer as well. He's a great producer, yeah. Great drummer. So, yeah, definitely. I, I played with Tommy back in the 80s. Uh, wow. We have some funny stories. He told me some of your funny oh, stories, yeah. actually. Yeah. Okay. And you guys were roommates back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I, some I can tell, some I can't. So, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we just watched that video, uh, Come Out of the Cold. Yes, that uh, that video, that particular video. Um, well, first of all, the video was was shot all live, and the uh, director is uh, Milcho. Um, she's a very talented South Florida director, with uh, many years of working in the in the industry uh, for MTV for uh, for many big projects. She's award winning. She's mm-hmm. uh, she's done videos, reality shows. She's known a lot for reality shows. And um, she um, she shot that video. We did it live at uh, Big Wall Studios. John Thomas, uh, another great Miami musician, mm. who owns a recording and rehearsal studio in North Miami. And uh, we did the uh, the video there. And uh, the musicians there are all great musicians. Uh, the keyboard player, his name is Carlos Bedoya. And with him, I have this project called Elston y Los Ramblers. It's one of the projects that I have uh, brewing. We're actually recording a new album together, uh, and it's a fun project because it's a, uh, it's a bit of a retro uh, throwback. You know, we do a little bit of a uh, rockabilly, we do a little bit of a. Uh, that's that's Milcho, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that! You know her. Yeah, yes, I, do. I know her. I know her very well. <laughs> cool. Uh, so yeah, that? it's a bit of a retro band, but we have a lot of fun on stage, and you know. Small world, isn't it, George? Yeah. Very. Very. Yeah. Small. Yeah, it gets smaller and smaller as you get older for some reason. It's like you get to know. <laughs> yeah, people. man, the older you get, you know, either some people drop off the face of the earth. Yeah. And we have we have less people to go around. Just some people move away and uh, and those that stay around, you know, we, we obviously have, have had a connection with them for a long time, you know. Yeah. All right. So um, I heard some really nice songs in your uh, 
songwriters in the round. Uh, Thank you. I'd love to hear you. We got your guitar here, and uh, yeah, I brought. Uh, I call her Shadow Ray. I name all my guitars. Oh yeah, what's her reason. name? Shadow Ray. Now, why do you call Taylor that? I was about to ask the same question. Okay, yeah. I was about to well, ask the same David. question. Last year when I was, uh, I got this guitar last year. I was on tour last year in uh, in Tennessee uh, with the Family Stone. Uh, and mm. I was opening up some shows for them. And I had just gotten this guitar. And I met Milcho's uh, niece. And her name was Shadow Ray. Oh. Beautiful young lady. And I said, you know what? I just got this guitar. It doesn't have a name yet. That's the coolest rock and roll name that I can think of right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna call his guitar Shadow Ray. Hey, uh, you mind playing us a song on sure. uh, on on her? I will. All I'll, right. Uh, I'll play the song called um, um, "Sitting on Your Throne." It's a song from "Waiting for Clouds," my uh, previous album. That's, What's that? That's this one right here, right? Yeah, "Waiting for Clouds" is an album that I released in 2013. Oh, okay. This one's called "Sitting on Your Throne." So you settle. For indifference Are the weapons you dispose You used to climb onto your heartaches But the window to your cruelty was exposed Like the story of Cain there's no joy out of pain Sometimes bad and the good feels the same When you run like a king There's a chance you break everything While sitting on your throne mm -hmm. Are you properly adjusted? Have the demons gone away? You worry, 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 don't you? But the angels and the shadows refuse to play Like the story of Cain there's no joy out of pain Sometimes bad and the good feels the same When you run like a king There's a chance you break everything While sitting on your throne While sitting on your throne You just might be alone you just might turn to stone Like the story of Cain There's no joy out of pain Sometimes bad and the good They feel the same When you run like a king There's a chance you break everything while sitting on your throne While sitting on your throne You just might be alone You just might turn to stone Beautiful. Yay! Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, do you get most of your ideas while you're sitting on the throne? Or <laughs> <laughs> that's sometimes actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That that particular song is um, is a very political song. Actually, I wrote during the uh, during a, a former administration that we had. Um, just ideas that you get from watching different life. scenarios in life. You know, mm. and that's I think that's what a, a, that's what makes a songwriter. You know. Mm. Is you know you you sponge up all the stuff that comes across your way, whether it's personal, whether it's just stuff that anything comes lately you. Uh, kicking at the crawl there. Maybe uh, you want to write a song about? <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm always I mean I'm always writing. You know that's one of the things that I've I've been blessed with that yeah power to write songs. You know I always since when this is a very young age. I started writing when I was in in high school. I was uh, about thirteen fourteen. The first song I ever wrote was actually. Uh, 
I walked into an English class. Uh, this sounds like a like a scene from a movie or something. <laughs> I walked into an English class, but it's all totally true. I walked into an English class, and it was I was like the first one there because I was a nerd. I was always the first one every, every class I was at. So I, I sit down at my desk and I look down and the, I saw a, a half crumpled paper and I picked it up. It was basically a poem uh, some guy had written to a girl, and the first line was, mm. "Girl, the world is changing fast." And um, and I took that home and I said, "Wow, that sounds like a song thing." And I wrote a song. That was the first song I ever wrote. Cool. That's great how that happened, and it just snowballed from there, right? And then from there on, I just you know I got the bug. I liked writing and you know and playing guitar. And so, all. Elston, let me ask you: Do we have our young actress there? Uh, we have a couple of young ladies out there. Young ladies, you're welcome to come in and sit down if you'd like. We're doing our radio show, but you're welcome to come in and listen to Elston Torres. Hi, Elena. Come on in. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hello, Alina. how are you? Nice to meet you. Have a seat. We're doing a radio show, so... Come join us, please. Yep, come join us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Elena, how do you spell your... La- how do you say your last name? I sound Gildina. Okay. Where are you from? Russia. Um, Russia. Originally. I know from another her. girl f- named... Le- is it L-Y-N-A? Lena? A-L-E-N-A. Oh, okay. I know a girl from Morocco. Oh, cool. really? It's the yeah. same name, Lena. Oh, wow, well, okay. you know, musicians always play better in front of an audience, especially if there's women especially in the audience. Ladies, so, so please yes. come on in, have a seat. Join. Don't be, f- don't be uh, shy. What's your name, young lady? Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Welcome Marianne. to the Rick Show on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk with uh, Elston a little bit more here. Um, we just heard a couple of songs. and um, So have you played in... Uh, as a solo artist, or you've been in any bands, or yeah, I mean, I've I I've I do different types of shows. I mean, I I get hired to do solo shows as a you know solo performer. I also have bands. You know, uh, the video, the first video that w- that we saw was a band that I have right now called Elson and Idols Ramblers. But I had a band back in the '90s, uh, which kind of brought me to Miami called Fulano de Tal. That was actually a very popular band uh, in the Latin rock scene. Like, yeah, George remembers. George remembers. Uh, I, I had a Fulano CD. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> How about that? See, I told you it's small world. All right. So we uh, we were one of the first. Actually, it, the story says. The, 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 thank you. The story says that we were the first Latin rock band f- signed to a major label f- in the U.S. Awesome. Um, back in '97. Trendsetters. Trendsetters. So yeah, we were kind of like the pioneers of that movement back then. You know. Um, so yeah, I've been in bands. I've had bands throughout the years, but I, uh, lately uh, it's been more of a solo solo affair. Although mm-hmm. I, even when I play solo, I usually have a band. Right. Like the, like the show I, I have next week uh, up in uh, Delray Beach. Oh yeah, tell us. Uh, you got some shows coming up. You want to tell people? About? I do. I have a show. Uh, I have my only South Florida show this fall, actually, um, in uh, a beautiful place called Arts Garage in Delray Beach. It's a great venue. Uh, they bring national and international artists there. Uh, they're booked every weekend with great artists from all over the country and world. Where is that on in Delray? Uh, it's in Delray. I'm not sure, but if you if you go on my website, which is elston.info, you can get all the information there. Um, but it's in, I think it's like in the heart of Delray. You know. So how many um, CDs have you put out, Delston? Uh, this latest one here, uh, Waiting for Clouds, which was released about a year ago. This is my fifth album. Wow. Yeah. Um, and this is my first all English album, actually. Oh, nice. ah. yeah, I learned how to speak English just for, to, for this album. <laughs> A friend uh, of mine said, uh, <laughs> Spanish guy, he says, Well, I'm going to start writing in English because God speaks English. So yes. <laughs> it's important. <Yeah. laughs> he only speaks English. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've done a few albums in the, in the past. You know, obviously, I recorded some albums with Fulano. Uh, back in the days uh, with with the uh, with BMG RCA who we were signed with, um, so yeah, I'm actually recording a couple of things right now. Um, mm. uh, an album with uh, those Ramblers. So I, I like your style of playing there. I, I guess you have different styles, but that was kind of a flamenco type. That was of thing. like a little yeah, a little bit of a fifties uh, right flamenco <laughs> Latin <laughs> thing, yeah, cha cha right. thing, you know. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you do finger style picking as well? I do a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Do you have something on the finger style you'd like to play for us? Um, maybe. Well, sure, I can play one of my. Uh, one of my more romantic songs, under the latest. Yeah, one. now we're talking. It's called. Uh, I, I don't know. Actually, you're actually going to play that video. I don't know if you want me to play the same song that you're. Gonna oh play no! If video. it's the same song, yeah, we're going to play, play your something video. else, right? Yeah, play something okay. else. Yep, okay. that'd be good. Okay, I'll play this other song then. Okay. This one's called "I'll Be Gone," and I played that song that the at other the night. Songwriters in the round. In the round. All it's right. I'll be gone. Yeah. 
You're gonna love me again when I'm gone. Yeah, you're gonna love me again when I'm gone. You're gonna wake up a bit too late and look around and see what you made. You're gonna love me again when I'm gone. You're gonna see the light of your mistake. Yeah, you're gonna see the light of your mistake. You're gonna find out a bit too late that you messed around and you ruined fate. You're gonna see the light of your mistake. Cause when I'm gone, I'll be gone. When I'm gone, I'll be gone. When I'm gone, I'll be gone And you won't be able to repeat my name Cause I'll be gone La da La da La da I'll be gone La da La da La da I'll be gone You're gonna love me again When I'm gone yeah, you're gonna love me again when I'm gone. You're gonna wake up on New Year's Day and look around and see what you've made. You're gonna love me again when I'm gone. Cause when I'm gone, I'll be gone. When I'm gone, I'll be gone. When I'm gone. I'll be gone And you won't be able to repeat my name Cause I'll be gone La da, la da, la da Yes, I'll be gone La da, la da, la da Yes, I'll be gone La da, la da, la da I'll be gone La da, la da La da Thank you. Thank you. Elston Torres, ladies and gentlemen, on Rick Show on the Radio. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. So uh where was that show again coming up in the fall? It's in uh this up is uh Delray. next it's actually next Friday, uh September fifth at eight o'clock. And it's at Arts Garage. Uh, you can look them up. They're on Facebook. They're, they have a website, artsgarage.org. And they're a great. They have. Uh, they just opened up a new uh, center in Pompano. Hmm. Oh, uh, check that out. Yeah. So they're they're doing a lot of great stuff for uh, not only for the Florida community, the arts community, but they're doing uh, stuff nationally too. So it's which is great. Maybe have to talk to them and promote them on the radio because yeah, that's what Rick's show on radio is all about yeah man <laughs> promoting my friends in the music business the film business and yeah and people helping out in the community too that it's important, uh, give man. back through the arts totally totally it's so important right. you know I just came back from LA I was out there for a month working and uh, that's a vibrant you know obviously it's a big bigger market you know uh, what were you doing writing some songs or I was doing a little bit of everything I was performing um, I played with my ex Fulano bandmates from many years ago we did a show together, uh, did some writing, did some uh, recording, actually, you know, a little bit of everything. I got sick, so I was sick for like two weeks, which wasn't fun, but I uh, still enjoyed it. Yeah, so um, we were here with uh, with uh, Brian Hanlon, who was writing some songs. Did you guys get a chance to write we did. some songs yeah, together? Yeah, actually, that same day that we performed, we wrote a song that afternoon. Wow. Yeah, a really good song called Blood on My Hands. Blood on Your Hands or Blood on My Hands, something like that. Wow. One of those two. <laughs> so that's great so when you write a song with somebody how does that work uh, are you like a solitary songwriter or when you work with somebody else it's a different thing I mean I started out writing songs by myself for many years um, and uh, when I when I got signed to Warner I, I was signed I, I am signed to Warner as a writer uh, they one of the first things they did was pair me up with different writers um, at the, in the beginning, I didn't understand. I didn't understand why. Was that the first time you wrote with somebody else when they pretty put you much? Together? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I had done it a few times, but never 
uh, in a professional level. Right. Professional That's level. a different uh, ball of wax there. Yeah. Writing yeah. With somebody and, on a professional level. But it's level, great. Right? It's great. It's, it opens it opens up so many parts of your artistic uh, vision that you've never realized you have. You know, because somebody always brings something else to the table. You know. Um, so I really enjoy that process. Now. So what do they lock you guys in a room and don't let you out until Pretty much. Out? You write a song or you'll never get out of here. Not like, hey, let's go to Starbucks and yeah, hang you get out some for water. A while. <laughs> yeah. When you finish that water, right. you won't get any more. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's usually very like, you know, I've had very few writing sessions that are stressful. They're all usually very, you know, easygoing and you know, when you work with talented people that are professional, it's just it's just fun, you know. So what happens for that? I mean, when you you know, you get together with these guys and you write some songs. What happens with those songs? Well, Elsewhere? in my case, I mean, I since I am signed with a with a publisher, uh, my I have a since I, I'm under contract, I have a quarter of, of songs that I have to give uh, every year on, on my contract. So I give them the song and they and they pitch the songs to different artists. You know, mm -hmm. um, the the video that you're going to play next, I believe, is called Closer Tonight. Mm -hmm. That's on this album also. But that song was recently recorded picked up by a very famous uh, a Spanish uh, artist in Spanish. Obviously, we did a Spanish mm -hmm. translation of, of the song. Uh, so th those are the kind of things that happen to me. You know, I, I write a song for myself, and another artist likes it and records it, you know. Okay, so that's how that works. It's like kind of mm -hmm. put into a pool. and Right. Uh, you s they, they send out a, a slew of songs, songs that they think will fit that particular artist, and they pick of the songs that they like, you know. Sometimes they don't pick any. Or sometimes they pick them all. You know, it just depends. You know, it's so uh, at that point there, when they pick it up, or is that when you, as far as like, uh, did, when you sell those songs, or you're under contract for that, right? Yeah, I or never lose my writer's credit, or in a, oh, that's know, it's always my name is always on the song. You know, it's not like I'm selling the song to anybody. It's more like they're 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 going to record the song written by Elston Torres and whoever you know, whoever right. else, or if it's just my song. And then you know it's it's nice because you know the song gets airplay, internet play. I I make so money. if you write the next song for like uh, next big song for uh, Shakira, you get a little extra money. Oh, there. more than a little extra money. Oh, good, good. Okay, We're talking okay. about house a uh, house in Cocoa Plum. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I was hoping they wouldn't like. Yeah. Here's your twelve dollars for this. No, song. no, no, no. It's the no writing. What happens for writing it, is yeah. still, and it's the reason why the industry has changed so much too. Is the writing is still. If it's not the most lucrative part of the industry, it's one of the most lucrative parts of the industry. And that's why what's happened nowadays is that artists that weren't writers before and producers that weren't writers before are writers now because they want a piece of the pie, you know? It sounds like it's a pretty uh, intense business, though. It's right? gotten, yeah, it's, it's always been, but it's, yeah, it, it is, it is. I mean, and now that, you know, as we all know, music, the industry has changed so much in the last 10 years. You know, yes, it what, we, what we used to know, as, what we were talking about before, 20 years ago, but it was when I got to Miami, it was a whole different industry, you know. Nobody's buying these things anymore, you know. I really yeah. make CDs nowadays. I just make a few for my live shows. Because people always like to take, you know, a souvenir home if they like the show, you know. Yeah, it's funny. Cause we had another band in here, guys uh, from uh, Forge, and their whole philosophy, it seems to be the new way of uh, musicians have of doing things is that, you record a bunch of stuff and you just give it away for free, Pretty and much, yeah. and then you make money off of touring shows and uh, you know and, and if you're lucky you get some syncs on TV or film and you know uh, uh, that's basically the way you make money nowadays. You know it's it's changed. You know? Yeah, is it? Uh, I know that sounds like a change for the worse in some ways because. You know, I mean, you put a lot of heart and soul into recording and making a CD. And money, too, because you have to. And money. Everybody has to get paid, you know? Yeah. Producers and, recording and engineers studios. and recording studios, musicians. Right. You know? And then basically, you know, I mean, I'm sure you have a website where people can buy your stuff yeah. if they want to. Totally, yeah. And you can sell CDs uh, at, at live your shows. shows. Yeah, that's where I sell most of my physical CDs, you know? Right. Uh, there's, of course, there's a big movement on, on digital, but even digital, I mean, Nowadays, you have Spotify, you have services like that where you don't really need to to buy a CD. I mean, you can yeah. basically find anything. So uh, that's on, the uh, on the internet without paying for it. You know, that's the uh, way that uh, musicians make a living nowadays is touring. Right, touring, right? and and I have the advantage that I'm also a writer, so I I a big stream of my income comes from writing. Also, you know, that's good. And uh, since I am signed with Warner, I, I do get an, an advance from them as a writer. You know. 
So that helps me, you know, that helps me pay the bills. And, All right. As a writer, do you also do ghostwriting or do you just strictly stay to your own personal? No, I, I've done ghostwriting. I can't say how, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but I have done it. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously it's a little tricky when you sign to a major publishing company because it's 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 going against the contract, you know. But I have done it. I've done it in the past, and it, it, that sometimes works out more as work for hire, you know, uh, where you know you get paid a flat fee for something, and and you know I'll give you this and you give me that, basically. So know? let me ask you: um, Did they ever? Do you ever get asked to write for an artist? And then you have like, okay, I'm going to write this type of song. Or? Totally, yeah. That's that's a lot of the job actually of, of what I do, uh, which is funny because for me. From my personal experience, I know many writers that are great that can do that. That say, you know, Ricky Martin needs a song. They write a song exactly for Ricky Martin that they they record. Right. What's happened to me more is what what happened. The scenario that I painted before, where I write songs for myself, and those are the songs that people seem to like. That like it happened to me with. Uh, it happened to me a few times. It happened to me with Julio Iglesias Jr. He, one of the the songs that I that was one of my popular Fulano songs. He loved that song and he wanted to record it. And a lot of my Fulano fans were, were pissed when he recorded it because they were like, how could you let him record it? Uh -huh, yeah. I was like, well, you know, it's my business too. It's what I do for a living. Yeah. You know? And, you know, it's my version. It's his version, you know? Like, you know, Yesterday has, how many versions of Yesterday are there? You know, there's, yeah. there's a ton, a thousand, mm -hmm. two thousand. It's kind of an honor, isn't it? It is. Yeah. You know, people love the song. And, you know, for, for the writer, it's great, you know, because the song gets more recognized and you make more income, you know? Which song? Do you, can you play the song? Uh, Los Demás, yeah, I can play a little bit of it, I think. You don't have to play the whole thing if you don't want to, play a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Seré paciente Aunque llega el día De ser Vigente Seré odioso porque nunca admito de ser lujoso. Vuelo con los ojos cerrados en una cueva de muñecos. Ya ah, no los demás viven bien, los demás lloran también, los demás na 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 All right. Well, thank you very much, Elston. It was great to really be here, nice Rick. having thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It was nice meeting you. Likewise. Yeah, man. Likewise. You're Guys, good guy. great. Thank you. Thank hey, you. we're going to play um, a music video here, and then we're going to speak with Elena and her friends. And don't worry, we're going to move Elena over here so you can see. And I know her back is to the. And I'm pretty sure uh, Tommy <laughs> Tommy O'Brien's probably texting us right now. Waiting. Move Elena. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Elston. All right. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Thank man. Much. That was cool. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the mics are off. We're playing that video. You know that I hate to say goodbye. It always leaves my mouth so dry. Seems every time we slide into our bed, yeah, the twilight pushes by. I realize that it's selfishness, wishing the world would go away, yes, and leave us here side by side if you stay. Stay closer tonight Then baby we can take it slow If you stay closer tonight I won't allow the moon to change its gloom If you stay closer tonight 
always have to hurt this bad when you leave me once again. I recognize that it's loneliness taking the place of this emptiness mm, next to me. Deregulation has allowed one massive corporation to spread its tentacles like a giant octopus, absorbing radio stations around the globe. And that's why you hear this. Stop it! SoFlo Radio will stand and fight the corporate monolith. SoFloRadio.com. SoFloRadio.com. Rock and Roll is back. September 26th and 27th, it's the Button South Class Reunion 4 at Revolution Live. Love, I've had my feel. Featuring Stranger, That's what I call Swole Woman, Gypsy Queen, Heartless, Canaveral, Slider. Last Child. Phineas J. Whoopi. Well, I had to see your man. And the Hepcat Boo Caddies. Well, I had to see your man, babe, I don't understand. I got my mind on you. Plus an all-star jam featuring members of past Button South bands. You remember the Button South. Yes, so please. don't miss the Button South Class Reunion 4 at Revolution Live, September 26th and 27th. With your hosts, Steve Stansel, Liz Wilde, Glenn Richards, Madman Mike, and Mark Allen of Race. Friday night, September 26th. Saturday night, September 27th. Revolution Live. Get ready to have your ass kicked. The Button South Class Reunion 4. Spandex, glitter, and hairspray required. Pizza Loft, if you want to go Italian and see Jeff Cohen's ponytail. You'll have great Italian food that's made by a Jew who has lovely painted nails. Hey, Donnie, how long we been on this deserted island? A long time, Lonnie. So long, I'm starting to fantasize about food. Yeah, food from the pizza lot. Uh, I sure could go for one of their gourmet pizzas right about now. Well, lasagna bubbling with cheese and oozing with tomato sauce. Stop it, stop it. You're making me think of their great manicotti and sensational Italian sandwiches. Yeah, but there's nothing to eat here unless you want to gnaw in this old lamp that washed up on shore. 
Speak to me, guys. What can I do for you? Hey, look, Donnie, a genie. I'm no genie. I'm Jeff Cohen from the Pizza Loft. Well, Lonnie, all our dreams are coming true. Okay, okay. Uh, how about some great homemade pasta or calzones and lots of that homemade Italian garlic bread? Pizza Loft does catering, Lonnie. They can cater this whole hey, island. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Donnie. We only get three wishes, don't we? Oh, no. At Pizza Loft, your every wish is my command. Oh, uh, then how about a million bucks, a dozen babes, a way to get us off this stinking island? Sorry, guys. I only do Italian. For lunch, for dinner, for office or home catering, step up to flavor. Step up to Pizza Loft. Yoga Gangsters, a Miami-based nonprofit organization, provides free yoga programming to youth and young adults who are either at risk or in crisis. The Yoga Gangsters' mission is to use yoga as a tool to teach youth self-awareness, self-respect, and self-control. If you're interested in establishing a program or wish to make a contribution, contact Marisol at 305yoga.com or explore their website, yogagangsters.org. SoulFlowRadio.com. Radio with some goddamn attitude. Tell me what you're made of and I'll tell you how you fall apart, says the world. The cynics sit in shadows while all the others take it to heart. A baby cries at a service for the dead. The rest will We're back. Big show on the radio, and that was our former one of our former featured guests, Forge. Uh, you can listen to them at uh, what is it? Um, meet. Forge.com, something like that. Uh, uh, join, Forge. sorry, join the Forge.com. There we go. Sorry, Colin. He's gonna listen and get mad at me for not getting it right. <laughs> but now we have some lovely ladies in the in the studio, and they're all texting their BFFs. Like, I mean, that's what they do. Earl's <laughs> on the phone. We can put the phones away. Oh, thank you. Anyway, never mind. Uh, we would like to welcome. To the microphone, Miss Elena Isangildina. Perfect. Did I yes. say it right? Isangildina. Yep, you did. Nice to meet you, dear. You as well, Rick. And where are you from? Originally, I am from Tajikistan, which is one of the former Soviet Union countries, USSR. Oh, awesome. Were you born there? Yes, I, I so. was. My favorite, second favorite stand. Yeah, e- yep, yes. exactly, yep. Besides the one that Sasha Barakoan is from, uh, where's he from? There's that... Kazakhstan. <laughs> we have a stare. <laughs> you know who that is? You're from Borat. Yeah, yeah Borat. Oh, Kazakhstan. Of <laughs> course. Kazakhstan. No, that's my neighbor right oh, there. Oh, it is? Yes. They're I not know. really like that over there, are they? I uh, know. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so I'm glad we have you in the studio today. And uh, thank, thank you. you for showing up. Uh, we did have a, an author, and he had to cancel out because he was he got sick and... You were gracious enough to answer the call and come in and talk to me on the radio Thank here you. about you're a filmmaker and an actress. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Great. So mm-hmm. uh, you want to tell me a little bit about your career and uh, mm-hmm. your projects and your friends? You can introduce your friends and, and why they're here today, too. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, actually, was it Morgan Lawrence who was supposed to yeah, be on the show Morgan, today? Yeah, Morgan, yeah. I met him at the table. Um, he's very nice. Nice and, guy, yes, yeah. Yes, very I sweet. really would have liked to speak, spoken to him, but, you know. Next time. Next time, right. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm here with my little click uh, from the Evil Dark production. Evil Dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. The movie that we just literally finished working on, and it, it is currently in the post-production process. I have Marion Shows right over here, who was our makeup artist on set. Say hello. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Marianne. <laughs> and... Um, the behind the scenes, uh, Miriam Borso. She doesn't want to say hello. Oh, she doesn't want to no. <laughs> you can, okay, you can bring the microphone Hi. back over. <laughs> she was our main uh, sound operator on Evil Dark. Oh, yeah, sound? Mm-hmm. Great. Yes. So, um, listen, by the way, um, if anybody out there would like to uh, speak with Elena about the, anything she wants to talk about, uh, you can give us a call at 954 954- 99 triple zero 36 or you can text us here at uh on david's <laughs> david's facebook <laughs> page you want to do it that way uh, you yeah. can just no no i'll tell you what <laughs> no they could just text me on my cell phone all right yeah if you guys know you guys know david if like if 
Tommy O'Brien yeah, wants my to. Cell phone is, uh, can you direct away. us, Tommy? Make sure you so can see funny. Elena here. All right. <laughs> and my uh, cell phone number is 414-856-6182. So if you want to text me with a question, go ahead. Right. Eol, I know you're out there. Eol Perlmutter, he probably has some questions for the young ladies, too. But anyway, Elena. Yes, sir. Tell us about your production. You guys just got done wrapping it up. Correct. Well, yes, uh, it was what about like three or four weeks ago what, that we finished shooting the main scenes. So now it went officially into post production, and that's um, in the process. So, what's your character? Uh, well, I am one of the leads, and I am the innocent girl with a twist. Let's put it like that. That is as much um, as I can really elaborate. Is that a big twist? I mean, a big stretch for you as a person being the innocent girl or is it? Oh, the innocent girl, <laughs> definitely. The twist is very, actually, a lot closer to me. <laughs> you come like here that. with a twist. Yes. That's good. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yes, life sir. would not be interesting if we didn't have some kind of a twist going on, right? You're absolutely right. <laughs> Great. So what else can you tell us about the production without violating any contracts or? Well, basically, you know, I... Uh, that was my very first uh, big production. I had never been a part of a feature and mm. a, a lead. That was my first lead and a feature project. So I was absolutely excited to be on it. Um, and just going into it, I kind of like kept my mind very open because I did not want or did not know what to expect. Um, but the whole production turned out to be really, really good. Uh, the people that I met actually, or met, I'm sorry, mm. uh, stayed in my life and we are keeping in touch. We're literally, be like, we have become a big family, like an extended big family. So now we always talk and we keep in touch. And we yeah. look forward, actually, to seeing each other at all the networking events, the table, Entertainment Tuesdays, right. and stuff like that. Just just get together for a beer, mm -hmm. coffee. And the most important thing for me is to actually keep the production ball rolling, meaning that uh, we are with the same people from set, um, everybody's involved in their own projects right now, but we are also trying to keep in touch and work on different things together because, you know, as artists, we just have to keep that creative flame burning. Yeah, I think that's one of the best things about working on a film project is that camaraderie, especially at the end when everything is done and everybody did their job and, you know, you go to the premiere of your mu movie and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yep. we deserve this. <laughs> so true yeah. absolutely yes and then just you know um just going to the audition for evil dark i got like three more filming projects out of it and then as like filming and going into the whole like the production uh of evil dark i've met people on set like let's say miriam so now we're um working on creating another filming project awesome yes and then can you tell us about that too early pre pro <laughs> uh, okay. Very, very pre-pro, but it's promising to be a very um, interesting and dramatic experience. It's a, basically a drama. That's what we're looking into. Are you guys writing it now? Yeah. Yep. So who are the writers? A drama with a twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, um, Speak into the mic. If you're going to talk, you're going to talk into the mic. I am the writer. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to direct it. And, uh, right oh, there. can you hear me? Yeah, better? No. Yeah. I should know no. better, right? Closer. There. There well, you go. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I've been uh, doing some, pro you know, production sound mixer for the past years, mm -hmm. and uh, I um, really enjoyed working with Alina. She's very professional and very dedicated. Um, it's just yeah. she had kinda, some kinda. some scenes where he, she truly shined as a, you know, actress that's committed. And uh, that's something that I always respect from people that I meet. So hmm. that's why we're going to be working together. Good, and yeah. Yeah, I've had that same kind of relationship where you you go through something and somebody really goes over and above, and you definitely want to keep those people yeah. around. Exactly. You connect to them and just yeah. kind of want to keep that those kind of creative minds or like-minded people in your life. So really. tell me a, bit, a little bit about your acting process. Uh, how long have you been an actress, and where do you find your – depth of character uh, from okay does it happen like right there on the uh, set are you a in the moment kind of person or do you like to really research your character and does it take a long time for you to get into character 
Well, I, I mean, we are all in a way artists and actors, you know, in life. We all go through our own personal experiences and that's what makes us unique, really. Um, I want to say that I always try to go for a more of like the in-depth characters rather than just very plain or shallow characters because they, I don't know, I connect better to like people that have like a, a story behind them, although they don't really speak much about it on right. camera, let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. um, I do definitely do my research, absolutely, because you can only improvise within that character knowing the backstory of the character, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, I do make decisions right there and then on set as well. But of course, research is uh, one of the most important parts. Hey, see, I am not an actor. Mm -hmm. I'm a writer and producer. Okay. But uh, I imagine that I am a musician, so I understand the process like, well, I'll play this and you play that. So we kind of work off of each other. Okay. I imagine the same kind of dynamic happens uh, with other actors while you're acting. Is that correct? That is correct. Absolutely. But at the same time, you need to stay within the limits of your character, obviously, because you have to know the story or the backstory of your, you know, the character that you're playing or mm -hmm. the character that you are becoming for, like, let's say the polling, like two to three weeks. And I suppose like uh, timing is important because you're, you know, it's kind of obvious to the audience when actors are waiting for the other actor to finish their line so that they can do their line. Of course. And it kind of, you know, it sounds like that as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, two people having a natural conversation. Very important. And that's course. important for your two actors to uh, to get that together. Do you guys talk about that or you did that you work that all out in the rehearsals, I imagine, right? Well, we do the rehearsals, absolutely. But um, it just happens most of the time it happens naturally right there on set because it has to um it no matter how prepared you are if you don't have that natural streak of just continuing or supporting a conversation as an actor it's not going to take you far because it's not going to sound natural mm. if that makes sense you know so let's say if you have like three or four actors mm -hmm. and one of them you know is not really pulling their load mm -hmm. do you guys like take them outside and beat them up or no i mean <laughs> do you like have a <laughs> thing where go, hey look you know we're, we're gonna do this and we mm -hmm. need you to do this or do you help them out absolutely well it's a process yes absolutely it the director talks a, um about a certain scene with us and then we just kind of like we rehearse it before we put it on camera mm -hmm. we kind of go through it once and then uh we're like okay let's try and do it on camera we kind of like hype our way up to making it so we go through the same scene a few times putting it on camera and choosing the best one just or j the best parts and kind of like put them all together that that is behind the scene yeah it's evil dark is it a feature film it's a feature film yes it's oh. a supernatural horror feature film awesome you're gonna mm -hmm. use special effects um I, yeah there's yeah we do um there's definitely some special effects and uh, it's produced by joshua curdle and tracy peace mm -hmm. awesome yeah when, when 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 can we see that one coming out? Do you have any idea? Do you have a, um, a plan? Just, I'm just very behind the scenes. I'm okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just can't kind of like yeah, production um, and then yeah. We just don't have that information yeah. yet, but yeah. very soon. All right. Yeah. So what other uh, projects you have in the works? I am currently working on uh, um, another feature film. It's a drama called uh, uh, The Vow, produced written uh, by Derek Justin Johnson. Uh, I absolutely love him. I uh, loved working with him. So uh, as we continue filming it, um, he has, you know, basically rewritten some stuff and recreated some more scenes, like added some more scenes to the script. So um, to give another depth to some of the characters, including myself. So I'm very excited to be working on that. Um, I'm also working on another uh, it's a short drama called Betrayal, written by George Louis Somel and uh, produced by Yesenia Cassio. You probably know, know her, her very yeah. well. Uh -huh. She's amazing. Um, so that's going to be like a political drama. Very cool. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Another sci-fi feature project called The Hunted. I heard um, of that one. Written by Antonio Oliva, who also co-wrote um, The Evil Dark. I met him on... Um, uh, during the casting for Evil Dark, and I absolutely love him. Um, what else? 
That sounds like a lot of productions going on. Yeah, and then, yeah, we're still, like, we're in the process of filming or, like, talking out new projects. And we're, I was actually just uh, talking to Antonio and uh, George. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the middle of uh, creating another, like, drama series, Miami series, kind of like web series. Um, uh, just can't say any more. Uh, all I know is going to be <laughs> a very, very interesting experience. So, yeah. Uh, good. So you got your work lined up for you then? For Yeah, absolutely. At least for now. I, I'm always trying to stay busy and just create. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. It. Well, it's great talking to you. And uh, I really uh, am looking forward to your projects that you guys are coming up with here. Thank you, Rick. Uh, do you come to the, uh, the Florida table meetings? Uh, have you been to any of those? Because... That's a great organization of filmmakers and producers, and we all get together and we the try to help each other out. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we talk about that. Yeah. Well, she actually just came to the Entertainment Tuesdays. So who's she for everybody? Who's Mary Ann Shows. <laughs> oh, you mean there's another? There's a third because if we're just listening on the radio, we don't. Mm, I'm sorry about that. Her. Yep, get it. <laughs> we saved the best for last. <laughs> yeah. So you're makeup artist. Yeah. You do any creature stuff? No, I don't do special effects, but I do body painting as well as hair and makeup. Mm. Body painting. She'll paint your body. <laughs> yeah. Could you paint my body, please? Well, I need some abs. I mean, if you're trying to go to Fantasy <laughs> Fest or actually huh? at Art Basel, um, I'm doing this thing where it's going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records for most bodies painted in that week. Mm. So. Awesome. Yeah, that's going to be uh, a lot of fun. If you need help, I mean, I can, you know, paint... Bodies? Yeah, bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or if I I can learn. Ooh, wow. <laughs> I'm sure you wanna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that's, that's that sounds a little creepy. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that, mom. If you're listening. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much again for coming to our show. And uh, thank you. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, the evil dark sometime soon. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rick, and thank you, David, for everything for inviting me. Very All right, much. thank you very much for showing up on the Rick Show on the Radio Show. So, uh, listen, folks, uh, we're gonna cut out now, and uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, got some really guests lined, really cool guests lined up for next week, but I'm not gonna tell you who they are because they're gonna make it a secret. It'll be a surprise. Top 1926 Hollywood Boulevard. You're listening to SoFloRadio.com.